So my video covering one tip against every warrior in Smite did really well, and a lot of you guys said you learned some useful stuff from that one. So today we're going to do the same thing but with assassins. Quick tips you can implement into your game without too much thought or study that can improve your gameplay when playing against the assassins of Smite. If you find this video useful in any way then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more guides just like this one in the future. But let's dive right into this with our first assassin. So first up we have Arachne. So my number one tip after studying and playing against many spooders in the past is to watch for the activation of her too. This can be through audio or visual cues, and then stun or otherwise disrupt her after one or two auto attacks and keep her away at all costs. The buff only lasts 6 seconds, so if you can stun her after a second or two and then just buy 3 or 4 more seconds of time by running away, the buff will expire and she'll never get that third hit for the stun. Arachne without her main form of lockdown will be pretty easy to deal with at that point. Oelix Due to Feather Step's damage increase depending on her attack chain, Oelix players will very often use two auto attacks before feather stepping you to get that max damage. You can exploit this if you're on the receiving end and time your Aegis, dash away, stun or silence her, or even things like Geb Shield, Kepri Ult, or using Shell at the perfect moment. When you take away Feather Step's big burst from Oelix, she's much less scary. Keep in mind, most good Oelix players won't always telegraph exactly how they're going to use Feather Step, but a lot of the time they will, and you can use this to your advantage. Bakasura. So I tried to make these tips applicable to all game modes, but really the best tip I have for Bakasura is relevant in Conquest and Duel for the most part. Baka has a huge tendency to invade camps both in Duel and Conquest. So make sure you ward a little more defensively and get better at tracking his movements around the jungle. If you're not paying attention, a good Bakasura will just leap the wall at your back camps and eat them before you even know it. If you can coordinate with your team then even better, since you can track him and punish his aggressive jumps and invades with rotations from mid or anywhere else that's available. Bastet. New Bastet relies heavily on her ultimate to do damage in teamfights. Without it, her damage is very mediocre and she has pretty weak CC in general, so if you can interrupt her with hard CC or just get away in general for the duration of her ultimate, then re-engage on her once it expires, that's the best way to deal with her. This can be tricky because it has a 12 second duration to prevent people from just doing this every time she ults, but do what you can to make her ult useless and the rest of her kit will be pretty useless too without it. This also goes for tracking the cooldown of her ultimate, if you see her use it and know it's on cooldown, it's a good time to fight her because the rest of her abilities are quite weak without the ultimate. Kamazots. You're never safe against Kama. Don't expect your tower to protect you because you can just ult and dive you for free. I see a lot of people falling victim to this, be it mid laners getting ganks from jungle and assuming they can just run to tower and be safe, or solo laners that try and stick around on 10% health under their tower to get that one last minion wave. Any good Kamazots player knows they can dive you and they will do so. Don't think a tower makes you safe against this guy. Daji. So this is just something that many people don't know about Daji. If you play her a lot, you probably do, but for those who only really play against her, this is lesser known. Dashi gets up to 40% damage mitigation from attacks that hit her in the back while she's channeling the two. So don't just throw your entire kit into her while chasing if she's using her two to get away, for example. Wait for the ability to end unless it's not realistic to do so, and throw your damage at her afterwards. Fenrir. Cripples are amazing against Fenrir, but if you can't pick a cripple, make sure to save your jump if you can for when he brutalizes you. You can reduce his damage quite a bit if he only gets one hit to brutalize and you leap away. Likewise for any silence, cripple or stun that you might have in your kit, and of course, buy beads against Fenrir. On some gods, especially those without CC immune ultimates, you might want beads even earlier than normal, like first relic slot in jungle instead of blink for example, otherwise Fenrir might just ult you and farm you under towers all game. Hunbats. His ultimate is on a much longer cooldown than other ultimates. If you use your ultimate in response to his and vice versa, your ult will come up about 30 seconds before his does. Make sure you utilise this and look to pick fights with him in that window of 30 seconds after your ult comes up, but his doesn't. Of course, this is not taking into account cooldown reduction, it's just a general rule. Also, a bonus tip, Hunbats 2 makes him airborne but not untargetable. You can still interrupt this ability with most hard CCs. Kali. Kali's power curve is a little weird. She's very weak in the super early game, but around 8-10 to 10 minutes she can actually fight a lot of people and most players don't expect that because she's dubbed as a late game god. So basically she's weak for the first 9 levels or so, but then becomes really strong for a short time, then weaker again as she builds into her core items, and then of course she gets stronger the later you go from that point. So fight her super early, and then mid game while she's weakest, while taking care fighting her from levels 9 to 12-ish. Once she gets max slash, boots, and one item, she can actually hit quite hard. And if you want specific picks to counter Kali, Sir Ket does really well because you can just ult when Kali ults, negate the healing and kill her with a tick damage afterwards, 
and Kuma Kana can just mez her and watch her entire ult do nothing and just wreck her with CC in general. Loki. So this is probably the one a lot of you came here for. There's not really one tip I can give that will stop you feeding to Loki. It's more of a general mindset and playstyle with this guy. Try to group up as much as possible. Don't waste your relics on things that aren't going to be fatal, because a Loki ult when you have no relics definitely will be fatal. Try to shut him down early on too. If he's solo, you can gank him frequently, and if he's jungle, you can invade him pretty much for free since he has no camp secure to speak of really. In terms of gods, Geb and Kepri do well for obvious reasons. You can cleanse his ult or res your teammate if they're going to die to a Loki. Any wide hitting silences or stuns such as Hades 2 are great for pulling Loki out of stealth. And finally, physical defense. It's sometimes worth buying a defense item even if you're a squishy mage for example if Loki's one-shotting you. Don't go overboard but one defense item can be a great way for him to do 80% of your HP instead of 100% at which point you can burst him down when he's used all his cooldowns. Mercury. Spectral armor is your best bet against a Mercury that's online. Every Mercury worth their salt will build heavily into crit and Spectral takes a lot of that damage off. On tanks this is a must against Mercury but even on squishies this can be a good way to deal with Merc since almost all of his damage comes from crits. And another quick one, try to pick fights in the jungle and not in lanes if you're against Mercury. His ultimate is amazing for ganking up lanes but there's very few paths in the jungle that a Mercury can ult down due to the winding nature of the terrain there. This makes it much harder for a Merc to get into the backline with a big ultimate in jungle team fights versus lane team fights. Nejar, spread out, especially early game. I see a lot of mid jungle combos grouping up to split midways when there's a Nejar on the enemy team. This just gives him a free chance to bounce the ring between you and get a ton of damage off. If you spread out roughly a ranged auto attacks distance from each other, the ring will be far easier to deal with since it won't bounce between you, it'll just hit once. Nemesis. Save your hard CC for when she uses the shield, don't just use it for no reason. A lot of bad or mediocre nemesis players will waste the shield, but the good ones won't, so ideally keep your on-demand hard CC until she uses that shield to either block damage or AA cancel, then you just hit the shield with your CC and it negates one of her abilities entirely. I play a lot of Nemesis and the shield is a huge part of her game plan, so if you save your Magma Bombs or Scylla ones for when she uses the shield, you still get the same damage as if you use them normally, but you negate probably hundreds of HP and healing and reflect damage she would get. Pele. Pele's 2 has a very long wind up and is pretty telegraphed when she uses it. A lot of gods have fast movement options and or CC to run away or interrupt the cast of this ability. This is Pele's only form of CC, so if you can, for example, stun or silence her out of it before it hits, she'll have trouble locking you down. This goes for both people getting died by Pele and also supports that are trying to peel a Pele from their backline. Much like Nemesis actually, save your hard CC, peels, and besides knockups of course, for when she uses her too, and then interrupt her cast, buying some time for your carries to either nuke her or run away. Ratatoska. So despite it being pretty obvious if you play the god, I still see so many people that don't respect or don't know that Rat's early game is insane. Always keep a watch on Rat's items early on because he doesn't have to back to base to finish the Acorn, so he'll likely get it online faster than you can get your boots done. So watch for this and if you see him finish the Acorn, be prepared to play passive for a bit until you can get your own boots done to compete with him. I see too many people playing aggressive into a rat because they didn't realise he just got 50 power and 20% speed plus healing while they only have a tier 1 mace. Rat will win that fight every time, so don't even try it. This goes for other lanes too. If there's an enemy rat in the jungle, keep watch and maybe play a little bit safer than you normally would to avoid feeding him early kills once he gets the acorn online and letting him snowball. Raven. So the Demon King has especially long cooldowns compared to most assassins. His ult is 110 seconds where most other ults are 90. His 3 is 16 seconds and his 2 is 18 seconds scaling down to 14, but it is the last ability you level so for a lot of the game this is an 18 second cooldown. Take advantage of these long cooldowns. If the enemy Raven engages and uses her, his entire kit to burst someone down, it's going to be a long time before he gets anything back up to be able to continue the fight or run away. So you can often kill him in trade if he dives your backline to get a kill. Also, the ultimate being 110 seconds is a huge deal. Try to keep track of when Raven ults, especially if you ulted him at a similar time. Your ult will probably come up around 20 seconds before his does, so in this 20 second window you can look to fight him and he won't have his ult to fight back. I mean, you can either pressure him out and invade his camps or something, or just force the fight and kill him. So Ket. Cirque's ult is sometimes a bit wonky with its targeter and you can actually stand in minions or nearby another allied god and force the circuit to ult a minion or the wrong target. A good Cirque will make sure she targets the right person before casting it, but in the heat of a fight or if they're trying to act quickly, you can sometimes steal circuit ults by doing this. Set. So besides counterpicking Set directly with something like King Arthur or Nejar, 
Set plays heavily off his ultimate, so any way you can disrupt him during it, like the previously mentioned two gods, or to get away from him while he ults is key to beating Set. Without the ult, he has very little healing and far less clones to work with, which tanks his damage pretty hard. Disarms or long duration CCs in general are great, so if you're playing support, try to save them for one set ults rather than just burning them as soon as he dies into your backline. Movement options are rough against Set because he can spawn a clone and TP over walls, so he can pretty much follow every movement option but wasting his ultimate is the best way to deal with Set. Susano. So honestly, this guy is one of the hardest assassins for me to give a tip on how to beat, simply because he kind of does everything. He has great mobility, good burst damage, fairly low cooldowns, decent CC, good AoE, good single target. It's hard to play against Susano for this reason, but my best advice for dealing with him is try to put a wall between you and him. Unless he already hit you with his 3, Susano has no way to follow you over a wall, so if you're a god with a jump, make sure to save it for when he dives you and go over a wall. This is probably your best chance to escape Susano since all of his mobility can't go through walls unless his 3 is on you already and he can TP. Thanatos. So this one is pretty obvious, but avoid fighting him in the early levels and dodge Death Scythe. If he misses Scythe, you're probably good to turn the fight on him for 10 seconds or so before it comes back up, but if he hits the scythe on you, it's probably time to run if you're not dead already. And finally, Thor. Try to stun, silence, or otherwise disrupt a Thor when he throws his hammer. He won't be able to teleport to it while under hard CC, at which point his mobility is gone with, along with a lot of his damage and you can start fighting him. Same goes for if he wastes the hammer in general, you can run him down there. And a bonus tip, you can unlock your camera angle in settings, at least on PC you can, so you can look into the sky and see when a Thor starts to land from his ult. You can often juke or use a dash or jump to avoid the ult, which puts you in a much better spot to fight him. But that's it for one tip against every assassin in Smite. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment down below about which tip you thought was the best. If you have any other tips for assassins that people could learn, definitely leave them down below as well, but I'll catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day, stay safe, and peace out you nerds.